Hey, my name's Casey. I'm getting ready to do some work on my 97 Tacoma. It's a 4x4, and uh, it's a really old truck. It's in good shape, uh, but the seat cover on my side has gotten kind of weary, and before everything breaks out, I've been stitching it for years, and it's just starting to be that I can't stitch it any longer, so I went and and got some new seat cover covers from Cover King. These are the ballistics. Really, really nice fabric. Uh, I'm going to be interested in seeing how it holds up. But at this point, I'm just going to be installing it. And I'll be mentioning things that I'm noticing as I'm going. I want to apologize for all the traffic noise because our where I'm where I'm working right now is at the intersection of the two busiest streets maybe in the entirety of the paradise of Tampa the instructions call for the first move to be putting the headrest covers on however it also shows the removal of the head covers so I've seen on the internet that people are sometimes taking them off and then trying to apply them in some cases they're quite tight and this one it looks like a really a really nice even fit so I don't think it's going to be a problem putting them on if I was to take them off but I'm not going to do that right now I'm going to go ahead and apply the velcro straps they tuck up underneath and then the velcro gets attached along the back this particular velcro stra strap it's got a deeper receiver on it. It's hook and loop, and the loop side is down. You line those up along the back to give you a nice tight fit, but all but you can match the seams together, and it looks finished. And I can see that being an improvement already. I have removed the passenger side and I wanted to just demonstrate or, to, or show to you guys how this looks. So this is a really nice fit. See how the seams fit together? And so far this is working out. It's kind of hard for me to figure out how to get it in the light here. But you can see it. It's, it's pretty pretty good fit. These straps are really convenient. You can, uh, as long as you've got straps that'll go down, you can attach them to gear that isn't included in the baggage. I mean, I've got a pretty good size first aid kit, and I actually use it quite often because we go out in the woods where it's muddy and everything like that. And eventually, somebody slips and makes a real mess of themselves, and so you can apply first aid until they can get somewhere. And I'll be able to take those boxes and use rivets and snaps and attach them to the back of the seat so that it's more readily available than having to have it all on the floor of the back of the truck. Because you see how small this is. This is a mini truck. This isn't even, uh, what they call those, what do they call them now, the, uh, the midsize. This is way smaller than a midsize truck. I mean, the midsize trucks now, with the exception of just a couple inches difference in width, are, are about the same size as my 1975 F-150. These things are tiny, but what's cool about them is you can get in places you can't get in any other size truck. You can get in it like a four-wheeler, like an off-roader, uh, but any place a Jeep can go, I can go. And I'll show you how I old man the daylights out of this a couple of Novembers ago and put a really good protective coating on it, protect it from all the stuff you encounter when you're on really narrow trails. But this thing is really nice. It's got a, a dighty right here. This particular piece of Velcro pulls off. This comes up and it just sticks anywhere it needs to stick. So I'll be able to get a good tight fit right through here. Again, I gotta unload all the stuff that I've got in storage. Bug juice, hand cleaner, 
F uh, 50 sun protection. Reading lights, foul weather gear. I guess I should take a second and vacuum out this bucket back here too. There's a zipper on this side too to allow for the uh, for the hinge. This side you just push it on and down and get it in position. And again, it's not too tight. Give it a more finished look. Just tuck it underneath these things. And they're symmetrical enough. I'd give you a close-up of all this, but the lens that's on that particular camera, or this particular camera you're looking at, doesn't have a particularly wide angle. It's more of a run-and-gun type reporter camera. I use it in my work. You say, hey man, you don't look too much like a guy that would be anywhere near a camera. And that's because I shoot other people and make documentaries. And they're willing to put up with my uh, appearance. Okay, that looks pretty good. Including this kit are these tools for helping to push things through. This actually has a notch in it so that you can take the, the fabric uh, uh, straps, tuck them in there, and actually get them through the area. It's got some padding. Comes with a glove and eye protection. Again, this thing's so small, it's pretty easy just to use the pressure from your own hand to put it underneath. Then bring it up and forward as far as you can get it. Reach back there, snatch it down, get it good and tight, kind of like you're getting ready for military inspection. Or how you used to tuck your shirt into your underwear, or some people actually wore suspenders on their ankles. I guess they ran from their knees or their socks ran from their socks up to their shirt. That was pretty, pretty hardcore. I was in ceremonial and I never ever wore those things because I thought they were just a little hideous in case you got in any sort of situation where you needed to jettison your uniform for something meaningful. Okay, so this piece of Velcro comes off. Like so. This is nice soft material that could be used for other purposes. Then this comes up and you pull it up as high as you can just so that there's a consistent pressure on it all. And then deftly push this piece down so that it attaches. tuck in the edges and again the tool isn't that necessary on this particular truck do your zipper
this top is in place. without a top looks. I may have put these in position out of order, but I don't think it's going to make a big difference. This is a 60-40 front seat, that being the 40. It has an armrest. There were a lot of configurations of these trucks. Some of them had power steering. Uh, no, they all had power steering. Some had power windows. Power windows are always kind of a challenge because eventually because of whatever kind of drive gear they use, they'll collapse. And I feel pretty fortunate that I haven't had that problem with this thing because it's all mechanical. And really, mechanical is always going to bear best. That's why it's weird when you're looking at F-150s. If you want a rubber floor, now I just found out you can order an XLT with a rubber floor, but it's so rare anybody does that the dealerships that I talked to didn't know you could do it. And you can't get anything in a higher feature that will uh, include, include rubber floors. I wish I had rubber floors on this because I go places that are really impolite and messy. And you're going to impolite and messy places, a rubber floor can really be a good idea. Man, you know, after 21 years, there's a lot of goofy stuff all tucked up in here. How old is this? Why it's so old is from Subway and I stopped eating at Subway a long time ago. This part of it is a little goofy. They could have made the section from here to here about another two inch longer. They also could have given you a Velcro device that fit in here. I'm going to get this part and see what the difference is. I've got the 60 part of the 6040 completed and it turned out pretty well. It did offer some challenges over there getting under the bottom of it, but I was able to overcome it without calling for any help. I'm very pleased with it. It uh, looks good. If you're doing yours, make sure you don't forget about installing the uh, little white deal. I'm going to lock, unlock this now. You see this little white deal? It's, uh, it's a little piece of foam type stuff. It almost looks like the stuff you would use to put in your sh on your shelves or in your toolbox to keep stuff from sliding around or getting banged. And it's there for friction. It's there to hold the seat cover in position on top of the seat itself without bunching up or anything like that. At least that's the theory. And I figure these guys have been at it a long time and they know the difference. So when I put that one on, I'll show you the finished product when I'm finished. And uh, not to be redundant. And then we'll uh, uh, wrap this thing up. All right, so it's done. It's pretty far and a Y finished. 
every in about two weeks I'm supposed to stretch it out and um, tuck it again at least that's what it says to do the um, passenger side bottom was a wee bit more challenging because there was less room also there are a lot of secrets under there I didn't know about all kinds of interesting things like shoes and ankle weights and wrist weights and things I don't participate in when I go to the woods but you know got a real health conscious gal going for me sun setting right now here in paradise and I'm banging this camera tripod around and it's uh it's actually when you get up there it's kind of pretty kind of pretty So uh, I want to thank you for being with me this long. And I also want to tell you that I only did this because so many other people have done stuff like this and I've really benefited from it. Um, I'm probably going to do something about taking my whole truck and painting it with bed liner because it, it was really getting ratty and uh, turned out really, really nice. It's been on there for uh, about a year and a half now. And uh, it does get marks on it when I go down those narrow trails, but it's not really scratches. It's just what happens when raw twigs get scraped up against a rough surface. And I really feel bad for anybody who opens a door on me because they've just chipped their paint. This thing is really durable. Uh, it was uh, Rust-Oleum, Rust-Oleum bed paint. And it cures in 72 hours, which is amazing because regular rattle can paint takes 30 days and it uh the key is prep i prepped it like i was going to go into a booth and boy oh boy it turned out well anyway thanks a lot peace go lightning <laughs>